guys welcome back to edupedia world in our last lecture we saw the newton's laws of motion in this particular lecture we will focus on the equations of motion we will see what the equations of motion are and after learning about those equations of motion we will handle certain numericals and examples based on equation of motion and our previous knowledge from previous lectures. So let us get started. We have already seen in our previous lecture that force is related to mass and acceleration as F is equal to mass into acceleration. In this lecture, we are going to see equation of motion. So let's see equations of motion. I will not go into the detailed derivation of the equation as it is beyond the scope of our syllabus. I will merely mention the equation, I will say what the terms mean and then we will try to solve a question and see how to apply them. The first equation of motion that we will see is uh, V is equal to U plus AT. Now we need to know the terms, what are they? So let's write it in red v is the final velocity final velocity u is the initial velocity initial velocity a as we know is the acceleration acceleration and T is the time. By time I mean the change in time between initial velocity, the moment of initial velocity and the moment of final velocity. So this is our first equation. It says that the final velocity is initial velocity plus acceleration time into time. That is acceleration into time is the increase in velocity over a time t. The second equation that we are going to see, the second equation is the relation between distance covered, velocity, acceleration and time. Distance covered is denoted by s. s is distance, we will write it over here later and s is defined as u t plus half a t square. Remember that we are not going into the derivation. We are just going to try and understand the terms and qualitatively understand why it will be so. S is equal to distance. So what does this say? This second equation says that distance is equal to initial velocity into time plus half of acceleration into time square. Now imagine a scenario where we have no acceleration. That is the initial velocity is equal to the final velocity. Which means the body is moving continuously at a speed u. Then we already know that the distance covered is speed into time and this holds true in this case too because if a goes 0 this term goes 0 s becomes u into t. Similarly we can apply this in the first equation imagine a to be 0 then this term goes 0 the final velocity becomes equal to initial velocity which it should be because 0 acceleration means no change in velocity and the velocity remains constant throughout. So we have a fair idea about this two equations. Now let us see what the third equation is. 
third equation is v square minus u square is equal to 2 times a into s. Basically this equation can also be derived by a combination of these two equations. So it is not an independent equation but depending on what the question is asking we can plug the values directly into this equation if need be. So what is this equation saying? Third equation says that the final velocity square minus the initial velocity square is equal to 2 times acceleration into distance. Again, we are not going to go into the details of this derivation. In our scope of syllabus, we need to understand just the terms and we need to know the equations so that we can apply them and solve the questions. Okay, so we have this three equation over here, the equation of motion. We already know that force is equal to mass into acceleration. Now let us try and solve some numericals using these four equations. We have a question which states that a car starts from rest and travels 500 meters in 30 seconds. The mass of the car is 1000 kg. The question asks us to find the acceleration, the force applied and the final velocity. The first thing that we need to do is to extract the available information in the question. So what do we have? The first thing we have is that it starts from rest. Starts from rest. What does that mean? That means that the initial velocity u, u is the initial velocity that is equal to 0 meter per second. We will do it in SI units. So initial velocity is 0 meter per second. Distance traveled is 500 meter. S is the distance traveled and that is equal to 500 meter. And how long does it take? It takes 30 second. So our time is equal to 30 second. Another information that we have is the mass of the car is 1000 kg. I am denoting it by small m is equal to 1000 kg. Now the first part of the question asks us to find the acceleration. Let us try to remember the equations of motion. The equations of motion we have are V is equal to U plus AT S is equal to UT plus half AT square and V square minus U square is equal to 2AS. Now the first equation we know the initial velocity, we know the time but we have two variables which we don't know V final velocity and acceleration. If we see the second equation, we know the distance, we know the time, we know the initial speed and this time is the same time, so we know this. Therefore, the only unknown is acceleration, which is exactly what we need here. So we are going to use this equation to solve our part A. I'm going to write it again here, that is for part A. A S is equal to UT plus half AT square. On solving it, we have 500 is equal to U is 0, so UT goes 0, 0 plus half A into T is 30, 
so 30 square is 900 this goes as a is equal to 500 into 2 by 900 that is equal to z double zero cancel 10 by 9 meter per second square pay attention to the units we are using SI unit everywhere so the acceleration will be represented as meter per second square you can further evaluate 10 by 9 as fraction if the question asks so you can leave it as 10 by 9 it does not matter now for the part B we need the force so let's solve it here the part B we need force we know that force is equal to mass into acceleration we have mass in the question as 1000 kg we just found out acceleration to be 10 by 9 meter per second square all we need to do is replace them so 1000 into 10 by 9 that is equal to 10,000 by 9 Newton why Newton because Newton is the SI unit so we got our second part solved here that is we have the force as 10,000 by 9 or I guess it would be 1111.11 but you need to check that for the third part C we need to find final velocity let's go back to the equations of motion the first equation of motion is V is equal to U plus AT in this equation we know initial velocity we now know the acceleration as we solved in part A and we know the time so this equation is sufficient to solve part C we can alternatively go to the third equation because we have u0 we have acceleration we have the distance traveled so we can get the value of final velocity but this equation will complicate the calculation a little because there is a square over here and ultimately you need to take a square root of the value you get this is a linear equation we would rather use this so v the final velocity is equal to u the initial velocity plus acceleration times t the final initial velocity is 0 acceleration is 10 by upon 9 and time is 30 that gives us we can cancel this with this this will be 10 this will be 3 so this gives us 100 by 3 meter per second the unit of velocity is meter per second so we have successfully solved the third part we can write it as 33.33 we can write it as 100 by 3 let us try and see solve another numerical so that we are much more clearer in this numerical we need to find the acceleration in a body of mass 50 gram when a force of 10 Newton is applied on it the first part asks us to find what is the acceleration then it says that the body is initially moving at 50 centimeter per second then what will be the final speed at the end of 0 0.1 second now this particular problem is a little different from the first one as in that the units are mixed here 
here we can see 50 gram which is CGS but then here it is 10 Newton which is SI then again here is 50 centimeter per second which is again CGS 0 0.1 second time is for the same unit in CGS and SI so it does not make much of a difference we will try to convert everything everything in this question into SI unit and then solve it first let us write down all the available data in this question the first thing that we know is that the mass of the body is 50 grams now since I want to convert everything to SI units I need to convert 50 grams to kilogram and that would be 50 by 1000 that is equal to that much kg that is equal to 0 0.05 kg it is just a unit conversion now the force which is applied on the body is 10 newton this is already in SI units the initial velocity u is 50 centimeters per second we know that 1 meter is 100 centimeter so if we try to convert it into meter per second we need to divide it by 100 and that would give us 0 0.5 meter per second finally we have the time as 0 0.1 second these are the available data now the first part asks us to find the acceleration we know force is equal to mass times acceleration this will give us the acceleration as force by mass that will be force is 10 newton mass a is 0 0.05 now just 100 sorry 100 is a 2 that would be 200 meters per second square we have got our acceleration as 200 meter per second square using the relation force is equal to mass into acceleration now to solve the second part the question says we need to find the velocity at 0 0.1 second so which equation to use let us write them again we know v is equal to u plus at i think this one will work why because we have this is v this is u we have the u as 30 centimeter per second we just found the acceleration and we have the time so perfect our first equation itself is sufficient to solve this question now we need to find v we have u as 0 0.5 meter per second we have this a as 200 meters per second square and we have time as 0 0.1 second and that would give us 20.5 meter per second the unit is meter per second we have converted everything to SI unit so here too it will be meter per second hence we get our final velocity at the end of 0 0.1 second as 20.5 meter per second with this two problems we have uh, some idea about how to handle such numericals in the previous lectures we studied the complete theoretical background of force contact and non-contact force the Newton's laws of motion in today's lecture we saw the equations of motion and using our knowledge till now we 
solve two numericals. In our next lecture, we will learn about movement of a force and the turning effects that can be caused by a force. Till then, goodbye, have a great day.